Station, uh, uh, it's uh, an honor yeah, uh, to be here and uh, sh can share some ideas uh, with um, all, all of you. And um, this subject, uh, the state of perception, uh, I've been uh, thinking about this subject since. 2016, when uh, uh, the, the coup against uh, President Dilma Rousseff occurred in Brazil. So it seems to me uh, that this concept, state of exception, is a key concept to understand uh, Brazil, the um, Brazil situation. Uh, today, no, not only Brazil, but the Latin America situation, and uh, but I, I, I will not uh, uh, discuss at this moment uh, the specific Brazilian situation. I, I intend to to give uh, to offer a theoretical uh, approach about this subject. I think uh, it's uh, most interesting for, for you. So um, I prepared a short uh, uh, text to, to express my ideas better and uh, I expect it's not, not boring <laughs> for you but uh, then uh, after the, the, the uh, in my presentation we can discuss and dialogue about the ideas. So, uh, the expression state of exception, despite the phenomenon, phenomenon complexity it refers to, and the severe criticism it has been facing for decades, is uh, undeni undeniable success, successful sorry, in the, in the media, social movements, political debates, and even in the academic realm. In the US and in Europe, especially since September 11, 2001, the idea was widely spread in order to explain emergency measures for fighting ter terrorism, which violated the fundamental rights as well as non-legal matters like Guantanamo as a blatant example. In Latin America, for its part, the exception served as explanation to numerous realities, among which it's worth mentioning the arrangements made by Colombian state to fight, uh, to fight par parliamentary organizations, the emergency economic measures in Argentina during the 90s, and most recently the Brazilian court's rulings known to be of exceptional nature in the guise of fighting corruption which has been referred to as judicial state of exception. What's common in phenomena apparently so distinct? How to justify the conversion of such a concept in one of the main keys to comprehend the contempor contemporaneous law and politics? These are some of the questions that we want to reflect on. The theoretical expo exposition of the exception uh, matter poses serious obstacles, namely the terminological uncertainty and the polysemy of the term a state of exception. The meanings ascribed to the exception is in the various fields of knowledge are commonly confused, which naturally raise even more complications for its study. Thus, for instance, François Sambonnet mentions two definitions of the term exception. The first one, which he calls classic, consists of the moment where the legal rules for periods of calmness are broken or suspended to confront a certain danger. The second one, strongly defended by, by Giorgio Agamben, would highly a deep change of certain legal systems against du du durable danger, like terrorism. 
Subsequently, however, the French scholar François Sombonnet rules out that second meaning on the basis that the idea of a permanent state of exception would constitute a contradiction of terms to the extent that such exceptions have become rules. It should be, it should be noted, however, that both definitions are correct as long as at their relevant starting points are respected. The exception studied by François Sambonnet is in a different field of language from the one assumed by Giorgio Agamben, whose purpose was to compre compre uh, comprehend the exception in broader terms as a new paradigm, paradigm of government. It's, it's worth now to discuss some meanings ascribed to the term state of exception. For a long time, the general theory of law has been dealing with the inapplicability and op option of a legal rule in a specific case, provided certain circumstances, which is modernly called normative defensibility. It's not a matter of normative indetermination, that is, uncertainty about the reach of the legal rule, but rather of a divergence between the purpose of a legal rule and the result arising of its application to a specific factual situation. In a legal dogmatic approach, on the other hand, the exception assumes many features. In administrative law, for instance, the notorious the theory of exception circumstance grants uh, the public authorities to an exception power to ensure the continuity of public service in times of cri crisis. In constitutional law, under the most varied names, state of urgency, state of em emergency, state of siege, um, constitutional dictatorship, and, and others, the exception is construed an explicit or implicit bundle of prerogatives used by the executive branch to face uncommon situations with a serious institutional instability or calamities of great proportions. For a sociological pers perspective, the exception is generally prone to reveal the ambiguity of self-proclaimed rules of law, where regimes of terror are installed to a huge contingent of the population. In the words of Paulo Sérgio Pinheiro, a very important uh, sociologist in Brazil, madmen, quote, madmen, wars, prisoners, blacks, Hispanics, Arabians, Kurds, Jews, Yanomamis, homosexuals, children, works, workers will be born and will die without having met the, restra the restraint of Leviathan. The political theory, on the other hand, employs this exception as a, as a paradigm of the government in contemporary times. Here, they reinforce the use of the expression permanent state of exception is used to char characterize the progressive replacement of the policy by types of social control, violence dues or open physical violence. Finally, from the ph philosophical standpoint, Carl Schmitt's classic statement is found. Sovereign is, who, is he who decides on the deception. That affirmation condense the central elements of the Schmittian decisionism, sovereignty, decision and exception. The sovereign would be the only one capable of making the final decision, whose subject matter is the, is the exception situation. Thus, what defines the exception is, above all, the unlim unlimited authority, meaning the complete suspension of the existing order. The semantic, the semantic richness expos, exposition of the expression state of exception, however brief, invites us to some observations. The first, the first one relates to the realization that the rule of law and the state of exception are not mutually opposite categories. Actually, although the Systematic use of deception may lead the rule of law to run. 
such a use su suggests the reference framework of the rule of law. As Giorgio Agamemnon reminds, the exception stems from democratic, the democratic revolutionary tradition and not from absolutism. Furthermore, it should be emphasized that, strictly speaking, there is not a state of exception, but states of exception. In other words, statements of power that lawful or unlawfully escape the limits, the limits established by the rule of law. Uh, the second observation refers to the theoretical statute of the exception. Unlike those who deny the legality of the exception, describing it as a merely political reality, uh, it seems that the exception will always belong to law. To say the least, uh, the rule that determines the exception will never be self-referential. It means that it will never suspend itself. However, a further matter shall be considered. It may sound polemic, but uh, it lies to, uh, in, this, in the center of this brief uh, exposition. Uh, the Brazilian public law, similarly to other legal systems, has long consolidated the concept and, and par parameters to exercise exceptional prerogatives without using the concept of state of exception for such a purpose. That leads to the conclusion that the real definition uh, value of, ex state, uh, of ex exception is not legal dogmatic, but otherwise, as it will be noted further ahead. Uh, the aforementioned meanings ascribed to the state of exception share, share a common sense, which can be translated in the idea that a uh, state agent invoking some abnormality takes different measures for the, from the general norm predicted for the case. According to Kauschmidt, unlike the normal situation when the autonomous moment of the decision recedes to a minimum, the norm is destroyed in the exception. That means that the exception unquestion, unquestionably affects one of the pillars of the democratic, democratic state, namely the popular sovereignty. It undermines the conception that all of the authorities, administrative, legislative or judicial, are merely mandate of the people and for that reason must act to the extent of the constitution and the laws, making rule to a voluntarism which constitutes, co constitutes the genealogical concept of the state of reception. Uh, the exception, while refusing the law, the main product of the popular sovereignty, undermines the structure of democracy. The claim of, a, of an impersonal government of the laws changes place with the personal govern, government of, men's, of men. People are disregarded on behalf of the sovereign which explains Giorgio Agamben's statement that the state of exception appears as a threshold of, the, of indeterminacy between democracy and absolutism. In this train of thought, the state of exception enhances the process of depolitization of which the current society is a victim. The democratic speech is re replaced by the authoritarian mon monologue. Not by chance, the economy that always posits uh, a complete distance of politics has a special esteem for the exception. It's interesting to note uh, that currently the market does, does not only require legal predictability and stability, as a consequence of the impersonal application of laws. He also demands that laws be violated to preserve his own interests. Those thoughts irre irremediably lead us to the question, who is the sovereign today? Would it, would it be 
the public authority who decides about the exception? It seems not. Luigi Ferraioli points out that a silent institutional revolution has been shaped in the last decades. In his words, we don't have the public and political government of economy anymore, but the private and economic government of politics. The, democrat the democratically elected governments are not the ones who manage social and economic life in view of public in interest anymore. The hidden and irresponsible powers of the finance capital are. The submission of politics to the economy facilitates the explanation of the current legitimacy crisis of elected bodies whose jobs, by means of a fanciful speech and sometimes ridiculous, is to issue actual and, so and social laws, but it benefits their, their own superior, the market. In the perfect summary of Luigi Ferraioli, we are in fact governed by individuals who do not represent us, while the ones who rep represent us are those subordinate and impotent people before them. That's the, the so-called malaise of democracy. democracy. A, democracy uh, a democracy without people serving the market and that, at the least sign of insurgency against the current conformation, is subject to authoritarian measures. As Stiglitz says, the rich don't need the rule of law. They, they can do shape the economy and political process to work for themselves. According to a study made by Oxfam in January uh, 2017, before the World Economic Forum, the property of only eight men is equal to the poorest half of the world and 1% of humanity controls a wealth equivalent to the other 99%. This is the democracy which are, we are dealing with. In this sense, the enhancement of the power of economy to towards society shall be equivalent to the political impotence towards economy. The market needs patently a weak state as a decision body in formulation of policies, but strong as a body who manages population and social control device. That does not mean, however, that the economy does not need the state. On the contrary, the market claims a maximum state in economy and a minimum one in politics. The desire is thus for an economy without politics, without conflict. That framework is part of what we call, can call neoliberal rationality, which some want to construe as an in, 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 sorry, in a Luctable uh, consequence of globalization, but which, strictly speaking, drawing of on Foucault terminology, translates a device of strategic nature that defends an individualist and highly competitive society whose desires are falsely satisfied through consuming and whose opinions are built in an environment marked by spectacularization. It refers to a never-ending present that makes the individual success sacred and condemns failure, having the hoax of meritocracy as a background in deeply unequal societies. It's evident, however, that new in the expression new neoliberalism does not merely mean the resurgence of the economic liberalism. The new liberalism uh, turns the lib liberal democracy into a, an empty rhetoric without correspondence to the social reality. And it's exactly in the, that increasingly clear antagonism between the democratic order and neoliberalism that the states of exception arise. At this point, it's already possible to hint at who is the actual sovereign. Who decides on deception nowadays is the so-called market, acting on behalf of an invisible and untraceable elite. The modern sovereign is the market. Ultimately, 
the state of exception is a requirement of the current neoliberal power model. That is how the democratic practice is neutralized and political regimes are silently reconfigured in a universal scale. Therefore, it's not by accident that the policy now referred to us to as exception has been converted to a binomial between friend and enemy, as mentioned by Carl Schmitt. To preserve the state of affairs, the stage waged a ceaseless war against a virtual enemy, constantly redefined, from which, in some cases, the condition of person is itself it's, is withdrawn, reducing them to a generic whole and unreal order. In short, the market defines the enemies and the fight, then the state fights them. The legitimation of this, this policy of enmity is made through a strong media campaign to manipulate public opinion and activate two effects, fear and hatred. Through them, a fascist culture is created that admits and stimulates the war against the enemies. In that con context, the criminal law and the criminal procedural law face a complete distortion, turning away from being a guarantor or in favor of the mere legitimation of the authoritarian, authoritarian aspirations of the state. The judiciary ceases to be an instance of conflict resolution and begins to act tactically. This is, what, this is what we have called lawfare in Brazil, the law as a political weapon. Thus, uh, the state of exception acts in the democratic society's routine in coexistence with the exceptional prerogatives laid down for situations of sta state of society defense. Not only has the executive branch by means of the the administrative police, but also the judiciary branch become a source of exception. Uh, therefore, the, the state of exception uh, constitutes a decisive analytical category to reveal the unvisable connection between phenomena which at first seem disconnected but together make the key to understand modern society. The crisis in the regulatory cap capacity of law, the crisis in constitutionalism, the level of social inequality all over the planet, the depolitization of societies, the emergency of terrorism, the resurgence of fascism and intolerance in all its forms, the, the crisis of parliament's legitimacy, among other elements, all work together to form a complex scheme whose unveiling is possible by means of the heuristic virtuality of the state of exception. That's it.